Okay. I want to tell you something that you've never read about in any photography magazine or anywhere on any website. And if you have a brain, you'll actually like this video. I certainly have my flaws sometimes of repeating myself. Now, let's talk about lenses. Now, why do they throw that freaky stuff in the lenses? Now, let's take a look at uh, an invention a buddy of mine made. It's called the Ferro Cell. Now, this is looking at the center of a magnet, right? Everything in the universe, by the way, works off of capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity. You don't have to bend your brain around that, okay? But what is it? Why are uh, lens manufacturers sticking all this freaky stuff, not a coating, actually in the glass? When the glass is molten, like uh, some of these radioactive lenses, like here's a nice little tiny radioactive lens. Why is it this lens is uh, the uh, last two rear elements are as much as 28% by weight thorium. In other words, 28% of the weight of the glass element, that's almost one third, is radioactive thorium. Now, what sort of freaky reasoning would somebody have to stick something like that in there? What is the reason why the center of this magnet underneath the ferro cell, my buddy's neat little invention, which is patented, by the way, this is a neat lens. You're actually able to see magnetism using glass elements, which are totally optically flat, but you don't actually have to see through anything. Since fields penetrate anything, obviously this is completely black. There's a piece of thick black cardboard on the back here, but I'm able to see it because the fields penetrate anything and everything, magnetic fields. It's the nature of the way light works. See, glass has certain capacitance, certain resistance, like this Zeiss lens here. Now, people think, oh my god, all those Zeiss lenses are so heavy. And they think, well, it's because it's a metal-bodied lens. Well, that's part of the reason. One of the serious reasons is that since we can't use radioactive thorium in lenses anymore, we've replaced it with the next best thing. Now, there's actually a lot of different compounds that are used. Lanthanum oxide, niobium oxide, um, lead. And all lead, by the way. Lead, actually, even though lead is extremely plentiful, lead is not really a naturally occurring element. It kind of is, but it's... Naturally occurring lead is actually extremely rare. What does that mean? If it's everywhere, then how could it be extremely rare? All lead is depleted uranium. This is the universe's most uh, anti-magnetic or diamagnetic element, which is bismuth. Bismuth is also not naturally occurring. It is depleted neptunium. De neptunium, by the way, just like uh, uranium, is fissionable. You can actually make nuclear bombs out of it. Yeah, that's actually one of the secrets released in the late 1990s is that uh, our U.S. government made uh, bombs out of uh, neptunium as experimentation. It's fissionable. All neptunium depletes into uh, bismuth and all uranium depletes into lead. So why are all these rare earth elements actually in the molten glass? Why do they stick that crap in there? Now, they know what effect it has on light, but they have no idea why it does that. To see, to find out or discover something, you know, you could stumble across it through lots of experimentation, which is how most science is done, through a lot of process and error, stabbing in the dark until you find something, but that doesn't mean you know how it works. And there's nobody in physics, even though all these lens manufacturers now, for the past 90 plus years, have been sticking freaky stuff in glass. Why is it, I've had people comment to me, by the way, this is the radioactive uh, thorium lens. Right, let me turn that off, right? That's annoying you, obviously. Um, people have been commenting to me, why, this must be the reason why those images from Henri Cartier-Bresson are so magical looking, because he was using an old radioactive lens in a lot of his images. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to make another video today about uh, why photography, uh, the art and uh, magic, has gone out of a lot of photography, and we'll get into this topic on a different front. This is the science front. We'll talk about the art front and why it's gone wrong and how it went wrong, which nobody else is talking about. Now you see that this uh, giant black spot over top of uh, the center of this magnet here where there's no light, kind of like everybody says, that looks like a black hole. Well, close enough. That's dielectric acceleration. The reason why they were using uh, thorium, radioactive thorium in lenses is a little tiny one. Back in the old days, now we replaced it, except there is no replacement for thorium. We've used lead now. See, one of the big secrets of Zeiss lenses is lead. 
It's actually leaded crystal. If you actually look, you know what leaded crystal looks like? The lenses, if you get past the reflection of the AR coating, you'll actually see. It's like, yeah, it looks like leaded crystal. It is leaded crystal. Now, Nikon and others use variations of lanthanum dioxide and niobium dioxide and all these other compounds. And what it's designed to do is wrangle the light. But how does it wrangle the light? The same reason, see, the enemy of lenses is this neat little thing called dispersion. Okay? And also, E equals HV. E equals HV or E equal H nu, or you can say E equals HF, which is energy equals the Planck's constant times the frequency. E equals HF, or E equals H nu, or as people write it, E equals HV. That means that red light is radically different than blue light, and wrangling that light creates problems. What sort of problems does it create? Obviously, chromatic aberration, vignetting. The reason, but they didn't know why. They just knew the effect that it had on light. They had no idea why it worked the way it did. They just knew that it worked. That's the reason this freaky crap was added to the glass. Radioactive crap in my glass, almost 30% by weight. 30%? Crap, that's pretty high. That means one third of this glass element, the actual glass, it's, it's not a coating, by the way. It's in the glass. That means one third of this freaking lens by weight is radioactive thorium. Why the hell would they stick that crap in on? Same reason there's a black spot over top of this magnet. It wrangles the light via everything in the universe is capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity. The secret by, and the reason for which, Nikon and Zeiss, we can't use the radioactive crap anymore because Europeans and Americans are pussies and we just don't use, we can't sell like consumer products like, look at the new lens, it's got radioactive thorium. You can't do that crap anymore. <laughs> But that actually makes the best glass. The best. There is no replacement. We've come up with good enough replacements. A good enough replacement is not the same thing. And next week I'm going to do some videos on some magical, still easily obtainable uh, radioactive lenses, uh, most of which are Pentax, Asahi Pentax lenses, which are radioactive and kind of prolific all over eBay and other places. You see, this is also a pole of a magnet. You see that black spot right there? Yeah, you see that black spot, don't you? Here's one of my images. This is from a discovery that I made about the phase shift. Each one of these black spots right here, that's the pole of a magnet. <clears throat> that means it's the point of centripetal convergence. What that lead and that niobium do is that they wrangle the light and they eliminate out the huge evil of lenses called dispersion. And what it does is, because of E equals HF, energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency of light. Blue light and red light like this, when they hit glass, which is a capacitor and an insulator, glass is a capacitor. If you don't believe me, check out Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the dissectable capacitor. Do a YouTube search. You'll find the video pop up immediately for you. The capacitance is in the glass. It's the same reason that there's uh, the capacitance in transformers is in the oil. You ever heard of transformer oil? Most of you don't. You open up these huge transformers and there's enormous uh, oil in there. That's where the capacitance actually is. That oil will kill you. It's like usually people think about grabbing a, grabbing a metal uh, copper wires or grabbing, you know, they think of metal as so far as killing you. No. <laughs> you can stick enough capacitance and capacitor oil, it will kill you. It will kill you. <laughs> The government's known about this forever. There are actually devices that, uh, interestingly enough, have very neat little properties. And uh, the way they store, you ever heard of like gel capacitors or gel uh, battery cells? It's the same thing. We're talking about a liquid or a semi-liquid in which high voltage, high amperage capacitance is stored. In other words, you stick your hands in that, uh, that oil, you're going to die. The reason why they add this crap to the lenses is the same reason why there are black spots over the top of the center, not the edge, because the edge of the magnet, the light is being scattered to your eyeball. And since I have this thing upside down here, hold on a second. There we go. Couldn't find my mouse cursor. Um, these are the edges of the magnet. You could actually see uh, the light is being diverged. That's centrifugal magnetism. It's black at the center here, this black spot on either pole here. Uh, from my buddy's invention. it Light does the same thing as it, it uh, basically kills to extremely high uh, rate uh, light uh, dispersion through multiple elements. Through any element, but certainly through so through multiple elements. That's the reason why these lenses are magical. That's the reason why they're good enough replacements now, like Zeiss uses lead 
They may actually use lanthanum. These are also all the family secrets. It's kind of like the recipe for Pepsi or Coca-Cola. That crap, that information is never going out to anybody, ever. It's like the secret recipe of KFC. That is what you will never, ever, 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 ever read on any specification chart for any lens ever made. The percentage of what the hell is in the glass. That is the secret recipe of every lens company. Every single one. And that is what, you'll never read this anywhere. Nobody knows, now this is going to sound like a really arrogant statement, but guess what, some, some, very few, often arrogant statements are nonsense. It's like, that's not true. Sometimes a really arrogant statement seems arrogant to you, but in fact it's the truth. Nobody in photography, nobody, including the lens manufacturers, knows more about the nature of light and how light works than I do. Oh, that's really arrogant. Yeah? Find me another person that has anywhere near the skills that I have and experience in lenses and field theory and fringe technology as so far as the manipulation of light. Please find them. Find them. There are a lot of people like uh, photonics. There are a lot of people with amazing PhDs in photonics. That doesn't mean that they've actually put two and two together. They have a lot of information they're able to regurgitate, a lot of stuff that they've studied. Some of them have even got patents, but that doesn't mean they really understand the nature of light. The people that added this crap back in the day, decades and decades ago, they knew what the effect that it had on light, but they didn't know why. Okay, Description is not an explanation. That's the big secret of all branches of science that nobody learns. Descriptions are not explanations. You can describe what something's doing. It's like, oh, we've invented this new so-and-so, and it does this, and it does that, and they describe what it does, but they haven't explained to you why the hell it works the way it works. It's the same reason why nobody explained how magnets work until I came along. However, magnets are basically in every device imaginable. TVs, computers, cameras, laptops, this microphone, everything's got a magnet. But nobody can tell you how a magnet works. Nobody. I own every book on magnetism ever written. I own it. I have it. Every single one. Nobody has ever defined what a field is. Nobody is ever able to tell you until my book came along how a magnet works, what a magnet is. Conjugate vortex, reciprocating processional hyperboloid. I told you how it worked, the way it works, loss of inertia, defiance. Anyway, that's a point for hundreds and hundreds of other videos that I've made. But this is the secret of why they stick that crap in lenses. Because it eliminates out to a very, very great extent most dispersion. But since we can't use radioactive crap anymore, you know how we have to resort to other things that are almost not as good, but kind of close. You hear this lens here? Why would they stick that radioactive crap in the lens? Yeah, this lens is radioactive. Why stick that in glass? You know, glass is glass, right? No, glass is glass, you know? It's all about coatings. All these morons out there on these photography forum boards, they're all cockroaches. They're not very smart. Not all of them, just about 99% of them. They're dumb cockroaches. They just think, oh, it's got a magical new super Oprah coating on. It's got a nano crystalline coating, and that's what... No. All that does is actually cut down on inter-element lens uh, light bounce, okay? Which is very important also for... Uh, for light dispersion. That way you can create really multi-multi-element uh, lenses and uh, you really cut down on the inner element uh, light bounce. That's why they stick this stuff in lenses. It's actually in the molten glass. What do these things have in common? Lead used to be radioactive. Bismuth used to be radioactive neptunium. Lanthanum dioxide. All of these are rare earth and a lot of the rare earths are radioactive. So why do they stick radioactive or near radioactive like lead? Lead used to all be uranium. Uranium, given enough time, turns into lead. Okay, that is how uranium, uranium. The well, same thing with neptunium, neptunium depletes, depletes. It turns into this really heavy. This stuff is heavier than lead, by the way. Bismuth, right? It's diamagnetic. It's diamagnetic. It means it hates magnetism. It has the lowest magnetic permeability. Lead and thorium and lanthanum dioxide have the highest rate of uh, dielectric permittivity. That means it's able to take regular optical glass and by adding lead or niobium or thorium, what it does is it wrangles the light. It actually accelerates the light into its path. In other words, it keeps it on a path. It's kind of like a guardrail. When light goes through lenses, and it travels through these various indices of refraction, it wants to go over the guardrail. That's dispersion. 
Well, the reason why the thorium and the lead is in the glass is they act like guardrails on a road that someone's going too fast. It's like, you know, you're supposed to take this turn at 30 miles an hour and the guy's driving 60 and he either, you know, he'll go over the side. <laughs> That's dispersion. That's what light does. Um, it's going to change this rate of induction. It doesn't change the rate of induction through the glass. What it does is it acts like a guardrail in a very crude analogy. Um, that's what the lead and the thorium actually does in the lenses. It actually keeps the light on the path through the lenses, uh, eliminates out much of the dispersion. That is the Nobody has ever written about this before. You will not find a video of any of this information anywhere. Anywhere. Now, this is the science of photography and lenses. Obviously, this is not the art side, you know. Obviously, there's, you know, photography is an art form, but this is interesting information, and nobody has ever made a video on it before. Nobody's ever talked about it before. Nobody knows what the hell they're talking about when it comes to this subject, but I do. Not only do I have the facts behind it, I've also got the logic behind it. This is the way thorium and lead and uh, lanthanum dioxide and niobium dioxide that's actually added to the glass. This is what it does. It guardrails the light that wants to go over the corner through high indices of refraction and multiple elements because of dielectric permittivity. In other words, it is accelerating the light towards the nucleus of the thorium of the lead by accelerating it towards the nucleus, and the nucleuses are everywhere since it's scattered throughout the glass, that means it guardrails the light as it's passing through the lenses. That's as crude as I can explain it. I mean, he explained it a lot more specifically than people's minds would go, oh, this is too much, my brain is seizing. Uh. <laughs> so, you now know <clears throat> something about uh, lenses, and you know more, uh, if you watch this video, you'll, you know, there's no other information out there like this does not exist, period, anywhere, not in any book, any video, anywhere on the internet. And now you can actually say, this isn't going to help your photographic skills, obviously, but now you can say, now I know why it's in there. This lead and this freaky radioactive stuff guardrails the light as it's passing through the lenses. Thanks for watching. Like this video and drop me a buck or two or a big, juicy, fat pizza. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Thanks for watching. Bye.